Okay, I want to show you how to take vergence measurements with a prism bar. It's quite simple and I have my wonderful model Emily with me today, who I've known since before she was born, I guess. And I'm going to show you how to do these measurements using Emily's fantastic eyes, which used to have some problems, but she did her eye exercises and now she's fine. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look. Now, with the prism bar, we want to be able to get up to at least 30 for when we're doing our positive or our convergent fusion reserves. And as we talked about in the first module, we're wanting to get to about 12 with our divergent or base-in fusion reserves. So we're going to do our base-in fusion reserves first, diverge the eyes. Then we're going to converge the eyes, our base-out fusion reserves. And then we're going to diverge the eyes again to look for any fatigue effects. So let's have a look at that now. We need to find an interesting target. This is my friend, Mr. Camel, who's been my constant companion for 15 years. And he gives something Emily, gives Emily something interesting to look at, as well as a, a useful lock for fusion. Okay, so have a look at Mr. Camel for me, Emily. And I want you to tell me if it looks like he has one head or two. One. Two. Good. One. Good, so we're doing jump vergences here. One. Which is a little bit trickier than a smooth vergence. One. You're doing a refractor head. And if you can see Emily's eyes, we're looking for that divergence One. and steadiness of both eyes. One. Okay, she's aced that and she's got straight up to 12 out of 12. So now let's have a look at her convergence. We're going to go from somewhere near the One. middle because I know she can do it. Watch for her convergence One. and her recovery as well. Oh, can you get him? It's a bit fuzzy, but yeah. it's one, sort of. Yeah. And let's try a super tricky one. We're trying 30. Oh, uh, can you get him? Or is he one and a bit? One and a bit. Yeah, so we haven't quite got that one. One. Okay, so break and recovery was at 25. That's pretty good. We're happy with that. Now, if we have a look at her cover test after doing that fusion reserves measurement, we can look for any fatigue, particularly... If we're going to have an issue with, say, dropping into an ESO after converging, we'll do a little bit more on cover test later. But we can see she's got a tiny little exo there and very good recovery. Let's have a look at her, her divergence once more to see if there's any fatigue effects. Have you got one head or two? One. And this one. time? And this time? One. And this time, one. she's got divergence and her eyes are very steady. So we know she's holding that without diplopia and her recovery is good. Perfect. She got 12 out of 12 again. So Emily's aced her vergence testing. And now if we want to have a look at her foria, there's various ways we can measure that with specific tools. Or you can have a look with the cover test, depending on what level of quantification you want to get. With the cover test, obviously, we want to have a look at the alternating cover test to give us an idea of magnitude and direction. And we've got a little bit of an exo there. And then the unilateral cover test lets us see how quickly an eye recovers to help us determine the difference between a fourier and a tropia. M's definitely not tropic. She's got two wonderful eyes that work very well together as a team. And we can see how she's holding that fusion well. So that's how we've measured a simple fourier with a cover test and fusion reserves with a prism bar. Uh, we can do this at distance as well, but as I said earlier, we're focusing more at near. All you need to do is get one of these babies, and it's very easy for you to do in practice with every patient you see that has two eyes. This is exactly how you do it. <laughs> You've got a rainbow light outside you, like I can see and everything. It's just... Do you know what that's called? Chromatic aberration. It's called a rainbow land outside of someone. Or chromatic aberration. Chromatic what? Chromatic aberration. Mm. Chromatic what? Chromatic what? <laughs>